um, as my husband started last week, we were doing our podcast for things we do around the toy room. Um, last week he set me up for doing cab glass. Pretty much cab glass comes in sheets like this. It's just plastic. Um, we get it at our local hobby store. Just Hobby Lobby. It comes in sheets of five or something similar to that. Six. A couple sheets. No big deal. Um, it's an 8 by 11 little plastic sheet. Um, what I do is I cut off pieces that I need. Which I've already done. Kind of here. Once it's cut, it does just break apart. Um, I try to keep the rest of it back in its main package. Just so it doesn't get scratched, because once it's scratched, it's pretty much useless. Um, but last week, he started working with Alice Chalmers. Um, he ground down certain spots in the inside to make it easier for the cab glass to fit. Um, obviously, he was being nice that day, because normally he doesn't, and I have to cut around it. But I'm not complaining. Um, you'll see that, you know, this one, he has got it shaved down. This one, he didn't. Um, which is a no big deal. Pretty much, pretty simple. Um, cab glass is one of those things that it's kind of like a puzzle piece. You take a little piece and you try to fit it into best fit the spot. And then all you do is glue it in. A lot of times, like especially with the front, um, you have to cut out for where the tractor sits. This is one that's not done. This is one that is done. Um, it's been cut out, little pieces here and there, um, just so you have the front windows. I try to keep it one piece just to make it a little easier. I also have a Ford here that I try to do the same thing, um, especially with the way it is there. It curves around the front. Makes it just easier to do one piece versus several. Um, I have a pair of scissors, little scissors, very sharp, very ready to, you know, pretty much take your finger off. But other than that, works great for cab glass and a Zacto knife with a very sharp brand new blade. Um, once this starts to be useless, I actually move it to the other one that I use for everything else. Just because it's not dull, but I like to have it as sharp as possible. Hence why there's a cap on it, because if there's not a cap, I'd stab myself with it. Um, other than that, pretty much to get started um, with cab glass, like I said desk is a little dirty so uh, cab glass ends up being static clean um, I kind of just stick it up here pinch it off so I know and then cut your square out of it simple as that no big deal like I said it's like a puzzle piece you just try to get it to fit in the best you can um, normally I have templates. Unfortunately I can't find them at this particular moment. But the template is something that I've done where I've goofed it off. Goofed it up. Um, that I just kind of gives me a good estimate of what this window should be. Um, but today we're going to do it from scratch. Um, pretty much like I said, pretty simple. I'm not going to actually sit here and show you. But I'll cut out the first one and then we'll get back and see how it fits and where we need to trim. Alright, now that we are set, I forgot to tell you, glue, super glue. Um, this is from our local hobby store, again, uh, Walt's Hobby. Um, I don't know the difference between most super glues, but we've got, you know, the normal one. And this one is actually, doesn't leave any residue on it. It'll dry clear. You know, most cab glasses, or not cab glass, um, <clears throat> super glue has a film, like a white film. This doesn't leave a white film unless you touch it. Once you touch it, then you're pretty much sol Um, but it works great for cab glass. Um, <clears throat> now I went ahead and, you know, cut my puzzle piece. Um, you always get these little pieces. Don't really mean much for anything, but I don't get rid of them. I have a little bucket that I have that I throw them in. Just because they're little pieces doesn't mean they won't come in handy. There's tons of little spots that need little stickers. Or uh, 
little windows. But I went through and I took the first one. And then I took a second chunk out of the main cab glass or plastic and cut out the second one. Just because left, right, same thing. Um, but then they get glued in. Let's see here. So that'll be that. That'll get glued in. I'll ask for the back. Same thing. If I can pick it up. Let's see here. Pretty much it just gets measured in there and cut at an angle. With the back of the Alice though, um, there's nothing to hold it on down here. Um, it's only the top. So what I do is I try to cut it just a tad bit bigger just so the glue has something to hold on to because um, it's gap filling so it'll fill in the gap. Granted, you know, these aren't intended for toys so any little bit of pressure would pop the cab glass, but it, at least on the bottom. But it does a pretty good job at, you know, getting it to stick where it needs to. Um, front, again, same thing. It's kind of angled funny. It's kind of skinny up here, fat, and then um, little, not as wide as the top. Or the top's not as wide as down here. Same thing. I'm going to put it in there, try to get that done. Uh, once we do that, like I said, we're going to show you here and glue the one piece in. With the glue, less is more. Um, you don't need a lot. One little drop and I kind of move it all around where it needs to be. And then I fit it in there. And push it down. Hold for a couple seconds till it's kind of cured in there and then you leave it go. And then it'll dry the rest of the way and it, you have cab glass. Um, looks good. Everybody likes the detail of having the cab glass. Other than that, it's pretty simple, pretty, you know, pretty easy. Um, there's a little bow there because of the way the glass is. Sometimes I'll hold it an extra couple seconds just to make sure that it sticks. I mean, you want a good bond, of course. Um, what I do have tendency of finding is if I do put too much glue in there, and when I touch it, my finger glues the cab glass and you have to start all over again. But other than that, I mean, pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, once you do all the sides, you have cab glass. Um, like I said, this one's already done. It's got the back. Right there you can tell it a little bigger so the glue could stick. Sometimes you even overlap the corner here to, to get it to stay. A little bit of paint, especially if you got a good paint match. Um, you can kind of cover it up if you wanted to. I do that with the Fords. Um, I don't have one here on the desk. I'll find one here in a second. Um, but unfortunately with the front of the Fords, there's nothing really to hold them on the inside. So I could put them on the outside and then paint around them. So you can't really tell that it's there. Add a little bit of um, sealant just to um, hide the fact that it was painted. Simple, easy, looks good. Um, so that's, I mean, that's that one. Um, I constantly lose cab glass on my desk because it's see-through. So we're just going to stick that in there. Now as for, like I said, with the Ford, same thing. I'm going to use this little piece here. Um... But it just gets measured and put in there. But like I said, with the front here, it's got that angle. Um, what I would do is cut it out, give it a little piece over here, which I'll show you here in a second. And then I kind of splice it with the exact knife, just enough to get it to bend. Um, if you do too much, then it breaks. But if you like edge it just enough, it bends. Um, we'll get that started. And I'll show you that when I get them. All right, <clears throat> now that we're back, pretty simple. Um, like I said, we were working on the Fords. I got a couple steps here for you. Um, what we start off with is, like I said, cut off a piece of cab glass from your little square. Um, with the Fords, I tried to do it on the outside first, um, just because there's no, there's not a lot of room inside to be moving around. Um, outside gives me at least the angle and at least the piece. Um, cab glass is trial and error. 
Um, as you can, you know, probably imagine any other stuff that we do is trial and error. Um, cab glass, when I first started, used to get me very frustrated because it doesn't fit perfectly. You have to trim. I mean, you'd get it to almost perfect and trim a little too much and have to start all over again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, this one is ready to go. Um, it hasn't been seared yet. Once you sear it, <clears throat> I'll show you that here in a second. You're only going to fold it once. Then you're not going to do it again because what's going to happen is you're going to fold it and you're going to break it. Um, <clears throat> you put the blade, um, wherever you cut. So if, let's say I cut this side or I flip it over and cut the other side, it's going to fold opposite of the cut. Um, so if I cut this side, it's going to fold down towards the table. If I cut this side, um, then it's, you know, it's going to fold down towards the table. Um, but I flipped it over. Um, so this side has already been ready to go. Um, it fits in this side perfectly. Um, so where we want it to fit in this side, well, I'll probably screw it up that, you know, we're working on it this way. Um, it'll go in there like so. We want it to fold towards us, so. And it's, you're not going to cut it much. You're just going to sear it just a little. Um, I'm trying to think. Nope. But it just gets a little sear, nothing, nothing. I'm barely even cutting it. Just enough to get it to bend. Um, that took me a lot of practice too, to get it right. And then it fits in that piece. The little spot perfectly. And then you can trim it off. Um, earlier we were talking about, um, like I said, a little bit of glue. You're going to want to trim it after the glue sets. Um, because I just put a little glue in spots, make sure everything is all glued in, glue it into its spot, try not to wiggle it around, because like I said, once the glue is set, um, it has a tendency to turn white if you touch it too much. But once you get it glued in there, which that one is, you can, you know, trim off the excess, and you'll see if there's excess, so here or there. Um, Oh, this really doesn't want to stay in. Um, glue does actually matter with temperature of the area. Um, it looks like it needs to be trimmed a little bit more. That's why I take the Zacto knife and cut up where I need it trimmed. Take it off a little bit. So if it's in there a little better. Um, so the glue sticks a little better. Simple. No big deal. Um, that's why this is imperative that it's sharp and it's got a point on it. Um, I did it with this side earlier. And then that's all you do. You wait until it's, it's glued. I'm going to try to pretend it's glued here. I don't trust it. So just take my little scissors. And that's why it's kind of nice to have little scissors versus big scissors. Ones with little nippers on the, on the tips. You just cut it off. The glue comes undone, you just add a little more glue. Let it go. So that is all that front side, this side, and then, you know, the other side. And then Scott will put it together. Once he puts it together, I can do the front and the back and on the outside. Um, fortunately, it's one thing that I wish Ford would have is the little, you know, spots in the back so I can actually put the cab glass in but when they're split in half like this it is kind of hard to put it on the inside um because there's no room to work um this one's a little easier because it's almost open um especially with the back window you know once he once he puts it together um because it's split in half that's when you do it and you have to work through the top and it's a little difficult um but try it have fun um, cab glass, like I said, it's it's kind of fun. It keeps, keeps you entertained. Um, make really makes a tractor pop. Um, other than that, 
you know, cab glass isn't for everybody. Um, but play with it. You know, keep it. Keep trying. Um, if you do decide to do it, don't let it get you frustrated. Um, like I said, one day it could be absolutely horrible and you never want to touch it again. Walk away. Come back. Try it again. Do it another day. I just glued myself to the tractor. I'm constantly gluing myself to the cab glass. Um, but yeah, you get it in there. Make it look all nice. I've already screwed this one up, so most likely we're going to have to redo that one. But we'll see. We'll have the boss tell me whether it's, you know, good or not. Um... Usually if he can find a flaw, then I need to redo it. If he can't find the flaw, then I'm pretty much golden. But other than that, plain and simple, you saw how we put the front and back. Um, or the sides on the Ford. The sides on the new, ha um, sorry, the uh, Alice. Like I said, this is ready to go for the back. It's a little bit big on the sides. Just add a little, little glue there. Let it touch. Nothing too bad. And you let it dry. That's set. And then, like I said, with the front, um, what you do is get the cab glass in there. And then you would nip it here and here. And then across the set top where you put in between the cuts. So you get this. And then you have to trim back and forth a little bit just to get it to where it fits on your tractor. Yay. And there's no spots on either side. Um, that show. I mean, you want it to look as consistent as possible. But that is our episode on cab glass. Pretty plain, simple, easy. Other than that, um, we'll be doing uh, one on, on paint in a couple days here. Um, at the moment, my paint station is covered in tons of stuff that need to be put together before I can make any more. Um, or take up any more room. Other than that, we're all set.